need to know this. Despite what these guys in the media initially told you early today, the Supreme Court did indeed uphold Obamacare. Chief Justice John Roberts was the swing vote, siding with the four justices on the left to uphold the law, ruling that Congress does have the power to tax Americans who don't buy health insurance, which was how the individual mandate works. So just like that, the rights arguments that President Obama shredded the Constitution with his health reform law go up in smoke. Here was President Obama speaking after the ruling. The highest court in the land has now spoken. We will continue to implement this law. And we'll work together to improve on it where we can. But what we won't do, what the country can't afford to do, is refight the political battles of two years ago or go back to the way things were. With today's announcement, it's time for us to move forward. Needless to say, the White House is breathing a lot easier right now than it was on Wednesday night. But before we can move forward, as President Obama urged, we need to know exactly what's in the Supreme Court's ruling today. Here to help us dissect it all is Simon Lazarus, Senior Counsel with the Constitutional Accountability Center. Welcome. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Very glad very, to have you very, with us. Very pleased to be here. The court struck down the mandate under the Commerce Clause, but then supported it under the right, the Article One, Section Eight, right to to levy taxes. What do you make of that distinction? Well, I think the bottom line is uh, the the court upheld the mandate, mm -hmm. and it upheld Congress's ability to um, ensure that uh, all Americans have access to affordable health care. Uh, it's much less significant which constitutional provision technically uh, the court upheld the mandate under. So that's the bottom line, and that's what really matters. Uh, the fact that it uh, turned the uh, mandate down under the Commerce Clause is really a kind of a technical point, I think, for lawyers. I don't think that the uh, grounds on which it limited the commerce power is going to affect uh, many or even any other statutes because having this kind of a mandate or a requirement is very unusual and not not something uh, Congress needs to do in order to enact progressive legislation or good legislation most of the time you know because the court is so secretive right and uh, you know no cameras no microphones nobody knows what's going on and they actually kept this one really tight uh, there's this whole kind of mini industry of uh, like you know looking at sheep's end trails uh, trying, to, trying to figure out what's going on Eight times in, in uh, Scalia's dissent, he referred to Ginsburg, who was writing for the majority, as a dissent, and, which is causing a lot of the people who are examining the sheep entrails to mm -hmm. think that Roberts actually originally had joined with the conservatives on the court and sometime in the last week or two had changed and Scalia never went back and changed his writings. What do you think about that? Or does it, is it even relevant? I think it's uh, wrong. I, I think, first of all, had whatever side Roberts was going to be on, Roberts was going to write the opinion. Mm -hmm. So the idea that the opinion that the four uh, dissenters, conservative dissenters, uh, uh, joined in uh, was originally a majority opinion seems completely implausible because Roberts would have been writing that opinion one way or the other. Right. Um, uh, secondly, it, it just doesn't really feel... Uh, right, that Roberts would be waffling like that. Roberts is not, other people might waffle, but I think, uh, I don't know Roberts personally, but he seems like a very decisive person and, and a very intelligent person. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that um, th this uh, unusual uh, decision, as you say, uh, knocking the mandate down under the Commerce Clause, which is what everybody expected to be the only clause that got serious consideration, upholding it under the uh, tax power, which no other judge had had gone gone near uh, in the course of all the litigation in the lower courts, um, and doing a very sort of deft maneuver with respect to the uh, Medicaid expansion part of the uh, of the of the law, uh, to me showed uh, a chief justice who has uh, a very refined political sense uh, of how to uh, assert his will uh, on a divided court. Uh, and also has a sense of uh, history. Uh, I, I think that uh, a 5-4 decision uh, to adopt what is basically the Tea Party's completely distorted view of the Constitution for what have, would have looked like completely partisan reasons um, was probably apparently not someplace he wanted to go.
Yeah, and and apparently he has uh, earned the wrath of at least Mr. Scalia. Yeah, oh yes. Well, Scalia is like that, uh, and the performance that he put on on Monday uh, when, he was quite grouchy. Uh, he he was Whatever. over the top, even for him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he sounded like. Uh, um, uh, Pat Buchanan. I mean, it was really, really extraordinary. Anyway, uh, yes. I, so I, I really think that the it's it's it, it, fun to think about uh, right. that kind of intrigue when you don't know anything about it. But I think right. it's not true. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it.